Hey everybody, uh, happy Friday, Bobby Klink here. I'm the attorney and online entrepreneur behind your online genius. And today I wanted to, to jump in here and kind of do something that I hope will be very useful for you. Specifically, one of the questions I get asked a lot from a lot of different people is, can you give me a checklist? What are the things that I need to deal with as an online entrepreneur? I know it's something that, you know, I don't know about you. I love a checklist. Uh, it just makes it very simple. It makes it very straightforward. And so I, I think a lot of people want that kind of, you know, very step-by-step -step process and it's useful. And I see it a lot in a lot of groups. And so I thought I would come in here and, you know, it's been a while since I walked through this. So I thought I would come in and do a live here to just explain what are the different things that you as an online entrepreneur need to get taken care of from a legal perspective in your business. And that way you'll know, hey, here are the things I got to get done. If I get those things done, I'll be in good shape. So that's what I'm going to do in, in this live. I'm going to go through those. And I kind of like to think of it as a five part or five steps and it's not necessarily steps that come in order, but there's five different areas that you need to be thinking about when you're trying to say, here are the things I need to deal with in my business. So the first thing is you need to set up an LLC, which is a corporation. Now, I know a lot of people don't like hearing that. They say, no, I'd rather just be a solopreneur or a, a, you know, um, a sole proprietor. And what I would tell you is you can do that. You can be a sole proprietor, but if you're serious about your business, if you're going to start having independent contractors, if, if one day you're going to have employees, if you're going to be doing any of those things, if you're going to be signing agreements in your business, having an LLC protects you uh, quite a bit. Now, what it basically does is it, it creates two different entities. There's you, and then there's the LLC. And so if the LLC signs a contract and for some reason you can't perform, people can't come after you. They can only go after the LLC. So it's about protecting yourself and protecting your assets from people complaining, people getting mad, people uh, starting a lawsuit. So that's what an LLC does. And I always think this is kind of funny because candidly, in a lot of groups I'm in, I see a lot of people talking about insurance, but they haven't set up an LLC. Now, insurance could be good, could be bad, but insurance won't necessarily protect you. An LLC won't always protect you, but an LLC is often kind of some of the cheapest way that you can set up a layer of protection of at least your personal assets. Now, it can get kind of complicated and be kind of expensive in some states, but in most states, it's going to be something that costs you a hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks to get it set up, and then you're going to be fine. So that's the first thing, set up an LLC for your business. The second area, the second step, whatever you're going to call it, is to make sure your website is all squared away legally. I talk about this a lot because, look, if you're an online entrepreneur, your website really is kind of the very first and most important part of your business. So it needs to be protected. You need to make sure that you've done everything right with your website. And there's three different pieces. There's a privacy policy, a terms of use, and a disclaimer. I talk about that a lot. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time today on all of these. What I'm going to do is next week, I'm going to be coming live each day to talk about these a little bit more and more in depth because I don't want to be here for an hour going through this checklist in a ton of detail. But you're going to need those three documents, a privacy policy, a terms of use, and a disclaimer. Now, if you don't have those yet, I give a privacy policy template away absolutely free. If you want to grab that, you can go to youronlinegenius.com forward slash free privacy policy. Again, youronlinegenius.com forward slash free privacy policy, and you'll get that privacy policy for free. And then look, there's an offer. If you want to buy the other two templates, fine. But hey, if you just want the privacy policy, you can grab that for free. But that's the second step. Get your website squared away. The third step is that you need to get written agreements with your customers. So if someone is paying you money, there should be a written agreement. And there's a few different iterations of this, a few different things. Um, if you work one-on-one -on -one with people, like if you're a server, a service agreement or a client agreement, I don't really care what you call it, but you just need that agreement that you're going to have every single one of your customers uh, and one-on-one -on -one clients sign. If you're a coach, you need a coaching agreement. It's a lot like a service agreement, but 
the coaching relationship is different, right? I mean, it is a slightly different relationship from a traditional service provider. So the agreement you're going to want there is slightly different. But again, the point is to, to get an agreement with people who are paying you money. And then you have agreements that you need if you have digital products. So if you're selling an online course, a membership, anything like that, you need an agreement for that too. These maybe you've heard called terms and conditions, and it's different than your website terms. These are terms and conditions that are specific to your course, to your membership, to whatever your online product is. And it's basically just the same concept as your client agreement, but with people who are buying your course, you're basically saying, hey, here's what you're going to get. Here's what you're going to pay. So those are kind of the broad sketch of the types of agreements you need with your customers. So that was three is have agreements with your customers. Then area four is have written agreements with your workers. And this includes employees, obviously, but also if you have independent contractors. So if you have a VA, you should have a written agreement with your VA. If you have a designer who does work for you, you should have a written agreement with your designer. If you have anyone who is doing work for you and you're going to pay them, you should have a written agreement with them. And these do a lot of different things and I'll talk about it next week. But the concept is the same thing. You need to have a written agreement that lays out what is the essential agreement, what are the essential terms between you and your um, VA, your designer, whatever it is, if they're an independent contractor. So that then takes us to the fifth and final area. And this is an area a lot of people don't think about. You need to get permission to use other people's name, images, image or likeness in your business. People have what's called the right to publicity. This is what allows, for example, the Kardashians to make a bunch of money by saying you have to pay us to endorse your product. Well, the same thing applies to everyone. And so you can't use someone's name, their picture, their likeness, anything like that without their permission. This comes up in a few different places. One is testimonials. You need to get a, get a written agreement from them that you can use it. I know it seems crazy and it seems weird, but the reality is that under some state's laws, you have to have that written permission. The other area where it comes up is where people are a guest on your platform. If it's on a podcast, if it's a guest post, if it's anything like that, you should have a, them sign something, giving you permission to use it and, and making sure that there's no dispute there. So that's kind of the fifth area. Now, again, going over it again quickly, the five areas are set up an LLC, deal with your website, get your website legally squared away, get written agreements with your customers get written agreements with your workers, and then get permission before you use anyone else's name, image, or likeness um, in your business. So if you do those five things, you'll basically be protecting yourself and dealing with the legal stuff that applies across the board. So I encourage you to do that to make sure that you are actually protecting yourself. Now, again, I hope you'll join me next week. I'm going to have a series of videos that goes in depth into each one of these so that you know a little bit more about what do you need to include? I mean, what goes into these different agreements? So that's what I'm going to be doing next week. Now, if you're hearing this and saying, yeah, I want to deal with this stuff, but it sounds like a lot. I'm going to be opening the doors in a little over a week to kind of my signature legal product. It's called the online genius template library. You get access to all of my legal templates to deal with all of these things and some other ancillary things as well. You get access to a private Facebook group. And then the promise that if I add more templates in the future, you'll get access to those too. So I'll be opening the doors in a couple of, or in a little over a week to that. So if that's something that you might be interested in, um, you can join the wait list to make sure you hear about it by going to youronlinegenius.com forward slash waitlist. These templates make it simple. They make it easy. You'll be able to get the legal stuff done in a matter of hours instead of having to bang your head and play lawyer anymore. And then you can get back to just doing what you want to do, which is building your business. So uh, that's, you know, if that's something that's interested to, or of interest to you, if you 
want to deal with this stuff and want to find a quick and easy way to do it, the template library will help you. Join the waitlist, youronlinegenius.com forward slash waitlist. But no matter what, make sure to tune in next week where I'm going to go over kind of the details of what you need in these written agreements. That way you'll know. And if nothing else, my call to action is, you know, obviously I would love for you to grab my templates, but if you don't, don't let this stuff sit and fester. At least do the best you can do on your own to get this done. So join me next week. We'll go over all these th things in more detail and you'll be ready to get all the legal stuff taken care of. That's it for now. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you later.